Hello, everyone. So today we will talk about our work called Lightweight and Practical Privacy Preserving Image Masking in Smart Community. I will help you understand this paper from the following four parts. Background, our scheme, evaluation, and conclusion. I will start with the background. With the rapid development of the Internet of Things and the fifth generation network, a variety of smart devices have emerged, which makes it very easy to share images. However, this also leads to a lot of information leakage problems. The two pictures on the left are daily photos of a self shared by a celebrity, and in the eyes, of many people, these two pictures don't leak any private information. However, about 40 minutes after she shared the two photos or moments, someone accurately used the neighborhood and even the house number she lived in. The picture on the right is an image of a smart cat's eye, although it is convenient for the owner to check the situation at the door in real time. It also infringes the privacy of neighbors, such as neighbors' daily schedule, neighbors' friendly relations, and so on. Many scholars have paid attention to image privacy protection since very early. The earliest and the most used methods are these two permutation and encryption. Chaotic map is a typical representative of a permutation. It is used to generate chaotic sequences, which are random sequences generated by simple deterministic systems. In addition, chaotic mapping has the advantages that it is sensitive to initial circumstances, determinacy, and uh, ergodicity. Thus, it is widely used in image privacy protection schemes. In this slide, we show several common chaotic maps such as logistic map, sign map, and tent map. DNA encryption is one of the most common encryption schemes. As we all know, the pixel range of an image is 0 to 205 file, which can be represented by an 8-bit binary number. DNA encryption uses DNA encoding to encode the each two of 8 bits into one of the AJC which is four in all. Then they defined rules for DNA addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and so on. Finally, the image is encrypted using these algorithms. These two pictures show the DNA coding rule and the DNA addition. However, the above traditional image privacy protection methods have some defects. First, they focus on how to make encryption work better. In real situations, traditional attack attackers are often ordinary people with no professional skills, not hackers. Second, their computing complexity is high. Take chaotic mapping as an example. It needs to go through several rounds of calculation to reach the chaotic state. This is empirical. Third, they all ignore the fact that the sensitive area is only a small part of the picture. For example, for a car, it is impossible to tell who it belongs to 
just by covering up the license plate. In other words, it is not necessary to encrypt the entire image. Based on the above problems, our scheme is proposed. We propose a more realistic model, curious human eye attack model, because in real-world IoT scenarios, potential attackers are often curious persons who don't have professional hacking skills. In this model, there are two main types of potential attackers. The first is the smart devices owners, such as Cat Air, that mentioned before. And the second is a semi trusted third party server. Our approach focuses on three challenges. The first is how to ensure the real time transmission of the network. Because in realistic IoT scenarios, real time transmission requirements are particularly high, especially when we need to encrypt images. The second is how to recognize sensitive regions. As mentioned before, sensitive regions take up only a small part of the whole image. The third is how to reduce the communication burden when image users use images. Traditional encryption schemas require interaction between data user and data owner, which increases the communication burden of the system. This is how we respond to each challenge. First, only sensitive areas of the image are encrypted, not the entire picture. And we choose a lightweight encryption algorithm such as ChaCha20 Poly13053 stream encryption algorithm. For challenge number two, we choose an efficient object detection algorithm such as Yulu. However, traditional Yulu can only detect an object, not part of it. In addition, there is no dataset specifically for sensitive region recognition. So we also constructed the sensitive area recognition dataset using several common datasets like wider face CCPD and uh, FVC2002. For challenge number three, we adopt proxy re-encryption. Proxy re-encryption enables data users to obtain the original data without interacting with the, the data owner, which greatly reduces the communication burden of the system. The following image shows the process of proxy re-encryption. If Alice wants to share images with Bob, they can't share them directly but through the proxy. First, Alice uses her, pro her public key to encrypt the, the original image to get the encrypted image, and then uploads it to the proxy. To enable Bob to obtain the original image without interacting with Alice, the proxy encrypts the encrypted images twice. After Bob obtains the secondary encrypted image, he uses his own private, private key to direct it and get the original image. Our scheme is mainly divided into four major states, which are preparation and image reprocessing freeze, membrane generation and image masking freeze, proxy re-encryption freeze, and image recovery freeze. There are four main parties, such as camera owner, IoT devices, monitoring cloud server and the community data center. In particular, 
camera owner can deploy IoT devices and set sensitive factors. IoT devices are mainly responsible for real-time monitoring, dynamically identifying sensitive areas and uh, encrypting them according to users' requirements. IoT devices and the camera owner can be unified on the data owner side. The images without sensitive information will be upload, uploaded to the monitoring cloud server for storage to reduce the communication burden between the data owner and the community data center. The cloud server will perform proxy re-encryption, enabling the community data center to recover the original image using its own private key. During the process, the data owner and the community data center can complete the data com communication, but the monitoring cloud server will not get any information about the sensitive area. Next, I will introduce our scheme in detail. The first is preparation and the image pre-processing freeze. This freeze is divided into three small states, which are system initialization, sensitive attribute setting and the image connection, and the sensitive area identification. First, the trusted authority creates two pairs of public and private keys, TKD, SKD, and PQ, SKU, one for IoT devices and the other for the community data center. Besides, it also needs to generate a re-encryption secret key, RK, D2U. According to IoT devices and the community data center's keys and sends it to the mounting cloud server, camera owners can set the sensitive attributes that need to be covered according to their demands and the lo location of IoT camera deployment. For example, the cameras deployed in the home are likely to use the face as the private area, while the cameras deployed at the door are likely to set license plates as the sensitive area. Then, camera owners can send their settings to IoT cameras. IoT devices have to recognize the location of the sensitive area by exciting Yulu and save the coordinates of the sensitive area SEX, SEY, X, Y, where SEX and SEY represent the upper left corners, coordinates of SE. X and Y represent the width and the length of the, of the sensitive area. IoT devices encrypt the sensitive area of the image to generate an encrypted image, ENIMG, according to algorithm 2. Then IoT devices upload the encrypted image and the four coordinate points to the monitoring cloud server. The diagram on the left shows the sensitive area. The figure on the right shows the algorithm flow of image encryption. After the monitoring cloud server receives the encrypted image with the size and the coordinates of the sensitive area, it can locate the sensitive area of the encrypted image and then perform the proxy re-encryption on sensitive area to encrypt ENIMG into REIMG. After finishing re-encryption, the monitoring cloud server saves the second encrypted image REIMG for subsequent processing and usage. The figure shows the algorithm flow of IMG re-encryption. Camera owner can decrypt images directly. As for the community center center, it first sends the image request to the monitoring cloud server. 
the monitoring cloud server then searches for the requested image according to the request and sends it back to the community data center. When the data center receives the second encrypted image, i.e. IMG, it executes the decryption algorithm of the cha cha 20 poly 1305 stream encryption algorithm to recover the image by using the secret key SQU. Then it can get the original image. The algorithm is shown in, uh, in algorithm 4. At this point, our entire work press is over. The next are the results of our experiments. First, we trained YOLO on sensitive area identification dataset to recognize license, place, fingerprints, and faces with over 95% accuracy. We perform image sensitive region recognition, sensitive region encryption, proxy re encryption, and decryption sequentially on the local computer. Our experiments were conducted on a MacBook using Python language. This is an encrypted rendering of our scheme. The first column is the original image. The second and third columns are the encrypted images of the encrypted sensitive area and the entire image respectively. The fourth column is the decrypted image by the user. As we can see, there is no difference between the decrypted image and the original image. In this slide, we show several evaluation metrics commonly used in the field of image privacy protection, such as PSNR, SSIM, image entropy, NPCR, and UACI. I'm going to use image entropy as an example. Image entropy is a statistical form of features which reflects the average amount of information in the image. In our experiment, we calculated the image entropy of Lena, finger, and car. The image entropy of Lena is 7.634. Car image is 7.626 and the finger image is 7.623, which indicates that the risk of accidental information leakage is very low. This slide shows the time cost of our scheme. The picture on the left shows our time cost compared to other works. You can see that our time overhead is the lowest, about 8 milliseconds. The picture on the right shows the time changes with the different size of the sensitive area. As can be seen from the figure, the encryption time of our scheme is relatively stable and doesn't change much. Finally, let me summarize our scheme. We propose the curious human eye attack model in which we can focus not on complexity but on fast and efficient cryptographic algorithms. Different from traditional image privacy methods, we dynamically identify sensitive regions and encrypt only sensitive regions rather than the whole image, which greatly reduces the com computational complexity. In order to reduce the communication burden of the system, we use proxy re-encryption to realize that the image user can still get the original image without 
interacting with the image owner. We build a data set specifically for sensitive area identification, trained the Yulu model on the basis of this data set, and uh, obtained high accuracy. That's the end of uh, my presentation. Thanks for listening.